Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. Thank you for being here. Welcome to another one of these quick market updates. And, and today I want to talk about what's probably one of the most dangerous themes for investors right now. And I'm talking about value investing and specifically the value investing trap. And I'm going to be focusing on one particular industry because I think it's the best example of this right now. So if you're in our private Facebook group, that's Let's Talk Money Together, then you see these questions daily, even hourly, okay? Like, well, should I invest in Macy's or Carnival Cruise Lines or United Airlines? And these hardest hit stocks in industries like retail and travel and leisure are, are trading at multi-decade lows. Carnival is down 76% from its one-year high and United down 80% from its November high. And I get it, you know, a lot of investors, they feel like they missed out on that 30% April rebound and they look at these stocks still bleeding red and they hope, they want to hope that they can make five or, or 10 times their money when those shares rebound. But it's all a trap. The best example of this is just last week. Okay, Thursday night, it was reported that JCPenney was thrown a lifeline from its creditors to avoid bankruptcy. Investors looked at that 86% drop in the shares since January, thought this was going to be their big get-rich-quick investment, and sent the shares rocketing up 21% on Friday. Then Friday after the bell, the company files bankruptcy and those shares are now worthless. Nation Shakespeare couldn't write a better three-act drama than that, and I guarantee you, Millions of investors, okay, they're worth 275 million shares traded on Friday. I guarantee you millions of new investors got sucked into that value investing trap. So today what I want to do, I want to make sure nobody here in the Bowtie Nation falls into that trap. None of my Bowtie Warriors are going to lose money on this one. Okay, we're going to start by talking about why value investing is such a trap right now. Then I'll show you how to invest, what to look for in these stocks, and three stocks that I'm buying. I'll also reveal a few other value investing stocks that could be traps later in the video, so, so make sure you stick around for that. Before we get into that though, I just got an email from the people over at Weeble on a special contest just for those of you in the Let's Talk Money community. This Thursday, May 21st, Weeble is going to pick at random one of the new accounts funded through the link that I'll put in the description below and give that person a third free share of stock worth between $30 to $300. Everyone here in the nation knows I've been using Weeble for about a year now. It's got some great features for investing and I love the stock simulator where, where you can try out some of your strategies before committing real money. You get two free shares of stock just for opening an account and depositing that first $100. And on May 21st, anyone that makes their first deposit, you're going to be in the running for that third free share. And here's the email and how it's going to work. Now, I usually have between 10 to 15 people sign up on any one given day, so I think we can easily be in that second row here, and somebody is going to get a free share of Walmart for over $120. So look for that link in the description below, and you can open your account today, but I want you to wait until Thursday, that's May 21st, to make your deposit so you get in the running for that third free share of stock. Also, if you subscribe to the channel, I'll be doing a reminder video on Thursday so you'll get your heads up and won't forget about that. Now, I'll be the first to admit that those value stocks are really tempting right now. Shares of Macy's were four times higher just as recently as January compared to the five bucks a share right now and traded as high as $70 a share in 2015. That is a 1400% return if the shares make it back to there at some point. And, you know, and the reasoning goes that these value stocks is that people will always buy clothes or they're always going to be flying in airplanes, right? So these big brands must rebound eventually. And it's true that we will always have an airline industry, okay? United Airlines, Delta, they will still be around. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the current investors are going to be. You know, remember, every major airline has filed bankruptcy at some point, some of them multiple times. You know, when that happens, their debts are restructured. Uh, the airline eventually comes back to the market with a new stock IPO, but all of those previous investors were totally wiped out. So just because something is cheap doesn't make it a good value. The market is just so disconnected right now from the economic reality that it's expecting everything is going to just bounce back to normal immediately. And, and that's just not going to happen, folks. We are going to see a lot more of these value stocks file bankruptcy and investors are going to lose a lot of money. Now, there is still money to be made. It's just not by jumping into these value traps you see in the market, okay? It's not in turning away from these stocks that have jumped in the last few months. Okay, for, as an example, for anyone that, like myself that's grew up driving on icy roads for four months out of the year, what's the best way to get out of a skid? You turn into the skid. You point your wheels in the direction you're going, and that's how you get control of the car back, and that's how you're going to get control of this market. 
And if there's one single stock that's benefited from all of this, it's Amazon, ticker AMZN, with shares up 27% just since January. Nation, honestly, I think the government should have called that $3 trillion stimulus spending the Amazon Act because that's who's been benefiting. You know, from groceries to essentials and just stuff to keep your sanity in that lockdown, Amazon dominated in online spending and it's going to keep dominating. This company is nearly three decades old, but is still evolving. And in 10 more years, I think we're going to be looking back, looking back at all of this and amazed at how Amazon has played its cards. You know, it's obviously already the hands down leader in e-commerce with a 44% of the U.S. market share, but it's also building a powerhouse in groceries, drug delivery, basically everything retail. Now, a lot of that's already priced in the stock, of course, but one segment that isn't is Amazon's logistics network. You know, how it's disrupting uh, warehousing and transportation and nation within a few years when those self-driving trucks are more common, Amazon's going to be making boatloads of money on that logistics network it's built. eBay is another solid stock here, and I think one that has more surprise upside over the next year. Now, the lockdown has brought a lot of people back to eBay, and some of them are going to stick around for more sales throughout the rest of the year. The company has come a long way through its sponsored listings program, which is helping it boost revenue beyond just those, those traditional seller's fees it always, always used to collect. Now, what I really like about eBay, though, and what is definitely not priced into the shares here, is that sell of StubHub, which it, it just completed in February for $4 billion. And looking back, this was better timing than anyone could have expected, and I expect the company to use a lot of that money to boost its share buyback program. Okay, eBay has over $4.4 billion on the balance sheet and just $8 billion in long-term debt, which, which is easily manageable for a $30 billion company. Now, analysts are already expecting an 8% increase in earnings per share over the next four quarters, which is, is in itself is amazing considering the broader S&P 500. So the broader stock market, the companies in that index are expected to see a decline of 10% in earnings. So basically, analysts are saying that eBay is going to beat the market by 18% on its earnings growth over the next year. But I really think an earnings surprise on the upside here, and the stock can reach $50 a share over the next year. Now, another stock I'm watching, and this one is the last you'd expect to see in a video about value stocks, is Netflix, ticker NFLX. Shares of the online streaming service are up 38% this year and trade for an unbelievable 92 times earnings. But, but this is another one that has just brought a lot of those hesitant customers onto the platform over the last few months. And, and I think a lot of people learned how much they like it. Now, what I'm thinking here is a lot of those other new streaming services, so all that competition that we saw coming up, uh, other than, of course, Disney+, Plus, they just really weren't ready yet. So, so the two really made out in terms of subscriber growth. Uh, and while Disney has had to contend with weakness in its theme parks, its traditional media, Netflix is just perfectly positioned for all of this and I think continues to prove its part in the future of media. Now, I do want to highlight a few more of those value stock traps. You know, some of the stocks I see most often asked in the Facebook group and, and in the comments to the videos. Before that, though, don't forget to look for that link to Weeble in the description below and make sure you're in the running for that third free share of stock this Thursday, May 21st you're going to get an instant return on those first two free shares of stock and potentially up to $300 with the third share. Now, there are a lot of those hardest hit stocks that could potentially be value traps here. Uh, so here I'm thinking anything in hotels, airlines, car rentals, and retail, but I'm most worried specifically about retail. You know, anything in that traditional retail space, especially department stores and the apparel retailers, uh, these companies were struggling to survive even before the pandemic. Okay, the Spider S&P 500 retail ETF, that's ticker XRT, it lagged the broader market by more than 60% over the last five years to 2020. And that's on one of the strongest consumer markets in history. So you've got stocks like a VF Corporation and Macy's that will continue to look like value stocks, but, but could just be traps just like JCPenney. Now, I'd also avoid some of those related real estate stocks. So the REITs that own retail and mall space like Simon Property Group. You know, these stocks are just not going to be safe until we see how bad the recession is really going to get and, and which are likely to avoid bankruptcy. Click on the video to the right for which stock sectors will rebound faster and how to invest your money in any economy. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.